As India looks to create another milestone in its space journey, Prime Minister Modi has announced names of the four astronauts who would fly to low Earth orbit as part of ISRO's Gaganyaan mission. Now, this will be the first crewed Indian space mission. Here's more. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Bharat is reaching for the moon, quite literally at that. It's time to conquer the space and plant the Tiranga. Prime Minister Modi revealed the names of four astronauts who will be part of this mission in the Vikram Sarabhai Space Center in Thiruvananthapuram. Four Indian Air Force men are all set to shine in the space. Group Captain Prasant Balakrishnan Nair, Group Captain Ajit Krishnan, Group Captain Angad Pratap and Wing Commander Subhanshu Shukla will be the first Indians to go to space from Indian soil on an indigenous space vehicle. Gaganyaan is India's maiden human flight mission. The Gaganyaan project slated for launch in 2025 aims to demonstrate ISRO's capability to send humans into space and return them safely to Earth. Indian Space Research Organization also released a video of the training underwent by Gaganyaan mission crew members. Selected members were trained in Russia and India for the mission. Prime Minister Modi hailed India's space sector and also praised ISRO for making its position in a global stage. In this new in global order, mein Bharat apna space lagatar bada bana raha hai. Further, Prime Minister Modi promised that India will have its own space station by 2035 that will study unknown expanses of space. First Chandrayaan and now Gaganyaan, India is all set to conquer the space and beyond. Bureau Report, Times Now. And for more of this, let's go across to our guest joining us, Dr. Amitabh Ghosh, member of the NASA Mars rover mission, is live with us. We also have with us Pranav Sharma, astronomer and space historian. Manish Purohit, former astro scientist, also joins us on the broadcast. Dr. Amitabh Ghosh, it's a big moment indeed. Uh, you know, when I saw those uh, four individuals who are all uh, suited up uh, in their uh, uh, gear, as it were, or all the preparations, uh, of course, there's years of preparations that they've already gone through and perhaps we'll have more to go ahead. But the point is that this is a huge inflection point. Uh, back on the heels of the success of Chandrayaan-3, uh, do you see this as a big moment for India entering that elite club of the great space-faring nations? Indeed, I think you you uh, hit, hit the nail on the head. So, you know, robotic spaceflight is difficult, but human spaceflight is like this. It's very steep. Um, you know, if, if your rover perishes in space, nothing happens. If an astronaut perishes in space, it's going to be a national crisis. Um, you have to learn how to uh, keep the human uh, on the spacecraft alive, the vital systems on. You need to have redundancy. This is something you, you will hear more and more, redundancy. What if your power system fails? Uh, what if your propulsion system fails? How are you going to get these people back to Earth? So this is a much harder game, much, much harder game than just going and landing a rover somewhere on the moon or Mars. That's very hard, but this is even harder. And that is why just three countries have been able to do it. US, Russia, and very recently China 
And so India is going to get into that club. It's, I think it's a huge deal. It's more, I, I can understand the emotional moment that you know, you're thinking of the astronauts, but underlying this is the trajectory of where ISRO is headed and where India is headed. And I think that is even more exciting than the, than the selection of the astronauts. Absolutely. And in fact, it's a huge technological challenge also in terms of the budget itself, uh, much bigger, a broader scope. And in fact, uh, Pranav, if you can comment on that, because we saw how the ISRO chief was saying that there would be three flights that would be planned. There would be two unmanned ones first tried out, and then a manned a flight that would actually be carrying those astronauts on it. The question, though, is that uh, for a common person, if you were to explain it, uh, of course, uh, uh, Dr. Amitabh Ghosh uh, showed us how steep the gradient is, but really in terms of the technological challenges, if you could break that down for our viewers. Well, uh, first of all, uh, you know, it, it will certainly, uh, as uh, our colleague from NASA had said, that it was, it's a steep trajectory wherein technological challenges would be uh, particularly expanding. What uh, uh, ISRO would be doing now is to test what kind of environmental uh, pressures that will entail. And they first, in the first two unmanned flights, they will certainly do the measurements that are required to ensure the safety of uh, humans. And that is when they'll go to the third stage. They'll ensure that, you know, all kinds of systems that are required to uh, maintain uh, certain uh, oxygen uh, levels, the atmospheric pressure that, you know, the other the systems don't fail, which not only support the flight, but also support life uh, uh, while on the mission. And then they will eventually, by doing the first two staging uh, stages of test, they will analyze the data and then put uh, our astronauts uh, in uh, the module, which will eventually go up in space. Right. And in fact, uh, Manish, you would have heard what the ISRO chief said in Goa a few days ago. He said that the roadmap is to put an Indian on the moon by 2040. Now, that's really ambitious considering that, our, uh, you know, human spaceflight program is just taking off, you know, uh, 15 years, uh, perhaps or 16 years isn't such a long period of time when you look at the kind of road that we would have to traverse. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, surely. Uh, first of all, uh, what has happened today has, uh, you know, boosted the morale for everyone and we are highly excited about the Gaganyan thing. But if you look at these missions, let's take into the perspective the recent attempts to land on moon. We had JAXA Slim, it landed sideways because uh, one of the engine came off. If you talk about Intuity machines, before the liftoff, they just forgot to remove one, uh, they were forgot to flip the switch on a very uh, typical uh, instrument on board that was supposed to do the ranging thing and it landed sideways and if you talk about the peregrine then it simply lost the whole thing and it came back and re-entered into the earth's atmosphere but then if such scenarios happen when we are taking astronauts on board we just can't let these things happen if you talk about landing humans on the moon for isro it's a very very steep task because we have to develop these technologies we don't have right now we are masters of the game and we are talking about the landing on the moon with a Vikram lander. But we are not the masters of the game. We are the beginners in that sense when we talk about the human space flight. We have to still, we have to still qualify our launch vehicle which has been qualified for the human space flight but we have not yet flown it. So this is the first step. First we have to qualify the launch vehicle. We need ECLSS. We need the crew module. We need all those data that are required to carry the astronauts. So right now, the first step, the Gaganyan will give us that particular data that is required for dreaming those for those big dreams to bring the reality. Hmm. Then the second step, our Bharati Antrix station, it is going to give us much more detailed analysis about the long duration stay in the space. And then there will be the final jump towards the moon and landing on the moon. So yes, right now we have to cover a lot of ground in terms of technology development, qualification, testing, and then approving it for the flight. Right. But, you know, in fact, uh, Dr. Amitabh Ghosh, and uh, you uh, perhaps uh, would be able to give us a better insight. Isn't this something that ISRO has also been working on for quite a while now? Because I remember the space re-entry capsule was uh, uh, launched in the late 2000s. I think it's 2007 or 8, if I'm not mistaken. You can correct me on the exact date. And there have been programs going on as far as the Indian Institute of Aerospace Medicine as well, where they've been prepping for just such a program for many, many years now. So are we really at the beginning stages or are we already, you know, reasonably uh, prepared in terms of the research and the basic groundwork that requires to be done? 
Right. So um, you're absolutely right. There has, of course, been some work being done. Otherwise, you know, the chairman of his show, the prime minister, everybody would not have come announced this thing, right? I mean, there was certainly they are prepared and they're very capable, you know, probably very capable research has already been done. But, you know, it's like uh, if you were following Elon Musk's starship, I think um, the first 15 blew up. And then if you look up Crew Dragon, which is taking uh, astronauts to the space station, um, so they have flew three or four empty, empty spacecraft to the space station to make sure nothing went wrong. Same, um, Sunita Williams, you know, Sunita Williams uh, is on deck to become the first astronaut on the Boeing end called Starliner. That has had software problems, other problems. It's two years behind schedule. So wow. all these, so at the end, the developmental schedule um, may be different, right? You, you might have, and then, then you have to make sure that when you do this launch with humans, it's perfectly safe. First you do, of course, an empty spacecraft or do that twice or thrice. So you have to make sure, and this 9, 20, 40 date, mm -hmm. um, it's a notional date, you know, everybody mm -hmm. knows that. You know, so we talk about it unless it comes in the budget line, <laughs> it is not real. So, yes. you know, it will depend on how, but the aspirationally, I think India is he invariably headed to human space flight. And, and the other thing is the human space station doesn't need to be to the moon. International space station is just 250 miles away. Yes. It can be to the international space station. And, then, and there is know, already NASA a plan with the United States, isn't there? Uh, with NASA, in fact, because I believe there's a, a memorandum that was signed, A, for the training of these astronauts in Russia, and also for uh, an yeah. Indian to be on board one of those spacecraft which would go to that space station. Yes. So I, what I am not sure is whether they'll go in a U.S. vehicle or an Indian vehicle. <laughs> okay. Okay, okay. Right, so, so, yeah. so right, right. <laughs> right, And right. Indian, international, spa international Space Station is going to go away in like eight years. Uh, it's very, very old. So mm. the next base would be on the moon. But, you know, what I'm trying to say is going to space doesn't mean going to moon. It can be maybe 200 miles away to this international space station. Yes, absolutely. So the lower Earth orbit is, in fact, the first mission which is now planned in the near future. 2040 is, of course, the long roadmap ahead. But uh, Pranav Sharma, uh, can you come in on this? You know, what are the risk factors that come in when you send a human into the space? Of course, uh, the launch and the technical aspects of it uh, we've dwelt on. But there's also aspects like space radiation, the isolation, confinement. Uh, what are the kind of... Uh, perhaps hostile situations that, uh, you know, one would have to counter or uh, sort of uh, account for when you send a human into space? See, when you, when you enter space, everything is completely out of control. And uh, you have to get your logic right first. And as our colleagues just said, that, you know, you have to create a controlled environment wherein it has to support... Uh, uh, life and in that and while also doing that there are space radiations which the spacecraft has to counter there are also several different factors you have to ensure that the say, space de debris doesn't come on the way the the trajectory has to be mapped correctly out you really need to do a lot of mathematical modeling and a lot of data analysis before actually putting uh, humans into space and also People who are going to space has to go through very rigorous training because, I mean, not like Earth, the gravity is not present. So our all systems also behave very differently in space environments. So all that kind of training, very, very rigorous training uh, uh, has to happen. And adding to uh, Dr. Ghosh what just said, uh, we, uh, we uh, are, will be sending one of our uh, astronauts to International Space Station. And the training has not started yet. It will start this year. And the, the trajectory looks very fantastic to me, wherein uh, ISRO has laid out uh, a very uh, interesting plan, wherein they really want to do a human space flight program by 2030. But they also want to come uh, back to the space-based deterrence and manned mission to moon by 2040. And that was laid out very clearly in the 2019 plan when they started the Defense Space Research Organization and the Defense Space Agency. Mm. So it's not only while you're putting your people in space, but you're also defining a very different kind of geopolitics wherein in India 
also becomes a major player. Absolutely. And in fact, Manish, are we looking at a space race or are we looking at more cooperation between countries? Considering the agreements between Russia, US and India, uh, many would say that perhaps this is not an area where this is just for competition. NASA itself, you know, scaling down its operations so drastically, as we all know, because of obviously the huge costs involved. Are we looking at a time of more cooperation rather than a space race itself? Yeah, we, we can call it a relay race where all the countries are participating in a single team and they are going to pass on the baton when, <laughs> whenever it is required. So that will be a better way to put it. Uh, talking about the space race and all that stuff that goes back to Cold War era, the situation was different. But right now, at this moment, it's not that kind of a situation. Right now, we are, we are ready to collaborate with everyone. We have to learn from so many countries that have already the expertise in this particular field. And if we have something, we are ready to collaborate. If you talk about Aditya mission, we have taken enormous help from ESA for the ground stations, for the software development. So it's all about collaboration. We can say, yeah, it's a race, but single team and doing a relay. All right. Manish Prohit, Pramesh Sharma, Dr. Amitabh Ghosh, Dr. Thank, all three of you gentlemen for joining us and educating us and our viewers on what exactly we can expect. But certainly the excitement is palpable. It's a big moment indeed. Uh, those are the four Indians who will eventually, at least three of them, will eventually be on board an Indian mission uh, to the outer space. Uh, of course, all eyes on whether that will happen as per schedule on 2030. Thanks so much for joining us this evening. The News Hour at 10 will be right back after the break.